Anybody who's been training long enough has definitely heard these two questions. How much do you bench? And what's your body fat percentage? Most answers are hardly ever honest, but not for the reasons you think. Most people simply don't know their body fat percentage. So what is the best way to test it? Well, recently I've tried two of the best modern methods, and today we're gonna compare and contrast to see which one is best and the most accurate. Starting off number one with the weight scale. Now the weight scale is something that I've been using, I would say for the past three to four years. So I've been doing the weight scale pretty consistently. And in my opinion, it's the most easily accessible form of measuring progress, especially just for average everyday people in comparison to, you know, getting a DEXA scan, which we're going to talk about later and all these other methods. Now, the way this actually works is through the plates on the scale and it uses something called a bioelectrical impedance, which sounds super fancy. And I'm actually going to read this wiki article right here. It says that it's a method for estimating body composition, in particular body fat and muscle mass, where a weak electrical current flows through the body and the voltage is measured in order to calculate impedance of the body, which stands for some sort of resistance or reaction towards the water, you know, some super scientific stuff, right? Now let's talk about the accuracy of it because a lot of people will say, oh, is it accurate? Like, does that actually work? And what I tend to realize, there are two forms of impedance sort of scales. You know, the first one is where you grab hold, you put your hands on it. It's called like an in-body measurement or something. Some gyms have them. And I find those to be relatively inaccurate. Every time I've ever done one like that, where it goes, the electric current goes through my hands, it's always been super inaccurate. But I would say whenever I weigh myself through the scale with my feet, I would say that method is a little bit more accurate. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. The first one I already mentioned, how it's so easy and effective for just an everyday person to get up and get some sort of gauge within their body fat percentage and range and their weight. And a lot of these skills actually come with apps to where you can actually track and see your progress. So the one I use is by FormFit. And as we see on the app right here, whenever you sort of track your weight, it goes to the app and you can see all your measurements. So your weight, your BMI, body fat percentage, fat free, subcutaneous, visceral fat. And then from here, you can go to the tracking page and kind of see your progress throughout time. So as we see here, this is back when I was on a cut. I started from 160, the low 160s, and I slowly worked myself up to now in the 170s, right? And so from this perspective, especially with modern technology, I do like seeing all my stats kind of housed in the app. So if you're definitely on a bulk cycle and a cut cycle, it does make it a lot easier to just get an overall gauge of how you're doing. Now, the only con I can think about is that you just must stay consistent on how you weigh yourself. But this goes with any sort of weighing method. So make sure you do it first thing in the morning after you use the restroom consistently every single day. Now, method number two is the DEXA scan. Guys, I recently just got my first DEXA scan ever in my life. I've heard about this method for years on end because it is said to be the gold standard of body composition tests. But in some cases I've seen where the DEXA scan could actually be quite inaccurate, but I actually wanted to test the results for myself. So this was probably two weeks ago now. I searched on Google DEXA scan near me, a place called DEXAFIT came up and I just booked my appointment. So they send you this information through email, like what to wear, make sure you don't eat, don't be caffeinated, all this stuff, right? So the morning of the appointment, I go in, I followed all the rules. You sit down on this little thing and the x-ray thing takes its time and slowly goes over your body as you're laying down. It took about five minutes or so, but the thing about the DEXA scan, and this is what I was actually impressed about, is that the results are immediate. And the way it works is that it actually uses x-rays, like low dose x-ray scan to kind of go over your body. That's why you gotta stand super still and make sure that you're not wearing any jewelry and all that stuff. And it measures bone mass, muscle mass, body fat percentage. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So since the results are immediate, Another thing I wanted to do is actually go over my own personal DEXA scan report just to show you guys. And we're going to see the difference between what the scale says, the bioelectrical impedance scale versus the DEXA scan on the same exact day. All right, so looking at the report, starting from the top, it says summary of total body composition analysis. The total body composition table summarizes the metrics of your entire body and displays your total body fat percentage, total mass, fat tissue, lean tissue, bone mineral content, and visceral fat. I am really not good at reading these graphs, honestly. I just kind of look at the numbers at the bottom. So as you see right here, my arms, the lean mass on the right is 12 pounds, the other one is 12.6 pounds, the other one is 12 pounds. Legs, 24.1 on my 
right and 22.4 on my left. So that's the big thing about Nessuscan is that you can see the muscle mass difference between two extremities. So I had no clue that my right leg was that much bigger than my left. This was actually pointed out to me. She was like, you know, you should probably do some unilateral training. And for that reason, I've started doing more unilateral training on my legs to try and catch that one up. So moving forward, as we see here, it shows your body composition, a, a full analysis. And then right here, it shows your bone density with your skeleton. Honestly, I looked at this picture of my skeleton. I'm like, you know, why is my spine slightly deviating to the right? Like, do y'all see that? So I forgot to point out that obviously my total body fat percentage, as we see here, is 9.8%, which is extremely low. Keep in mind, I just got off a cut and I'm 10 pounds heavier than when I got off my cut in which I believe I stopped my cut at around 10%. So according to the DEXA, after 10 pounds more on me, I am still at 10% or 9.8%, which I have a hard time believing. But even the lady said, as we were reviewing this afterwards, she was like, yeah, you have like very, very little fat on your body. So I'm gonna post a video right here, guys, of myself. Let me know, do I look like I'm actually 10%? I don't know, I, I think I'm more around 12, 13%. Now, here's what I did. The same exact day before I went to the DEXA scan, I did my weight on the scale, and my scale weight said I was 12.8% body fat with a weight of 168.8. Now, if I had to pick the two, I will honestly say that the scale was more accurate than the DEXA scan. Do I know that for sure? No, because keep in mind, in terms of body fat percentage, percentage is so hard to sort of calculate it because so many people sort of hold weight differently but me knowing my body i know that i hold a lot of my fat within my abdominal region and lower back like nothing else really holds fat maybe my arms a little bit but if i had to compare and contrast the two i would honestly say that the scale is a bit more accurate in terms of the closest is being to my actual body fat percentage and I would rather overestimate my body fat percentage than underestimate it, honestly. And then as long as you have a good gauge on the mirror and then also your weight progress, I believe both methods can be a good source of tracking and measuring progress. Now, after getting my first DEXA scan, what are the pros of it? The first one I would say is that the DEXA is good for a holistic viewing of your muscle and your fat distribution. So if you really wanna see everything, how it's placed on your body in a more holistic way, then I believe getting a DEXA scan will be the best method to do that. However, I don't think it's the best in terms of measuring body fat percentage to the exact degree of accuracy. I do believe some impended scales do work a little bit better, even if they overestimate a bit. Keep in mind, every single sort of test you do is gonna be off by a margin of one to two percentage points. But like I said before, I would rather overestimate than underestimate. Now the cons of the DEXA scan is that it can be a little costly and the process just takes time. So you gotta like book an appointment, you gotta wait to your date. You know, you can't do it instantaneously like you can with a scale. So moving forward, this is how I'm gonna approach measuring my progress. Obviously, I'm gonna keep using my scale every single day, especially on this lean bulk that I'm doing over a long period of time. And then every three months, I'm gonna do a DEXA scan to holistically see how I'm building muscle and where that weight distribution is going. Because since I already got a baseline of, you know, the 9.8% from the DEXA scan, the next time I do it three months from now, if it says 10.5 or 11%, now I know that, hey, I'm, I'm actually gaining fat at this point in time. So I believe both can be used to track projects in a good way. You just gotta do what's best for you. Let me know down in the comments which method you prefer if you ever got in a DEXA scan and how accurate was that for you. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace.